Hello, and from everybody at Epic TV, we wish you a happy new year. I hope you're not feeling the effects of last night too badly. I know I am. There's probably no bigger adventure than soloing, and these three climbers prove that they can be quite normal while still enjoying this type of climbing. In third spot is Ian Miller, who's using his kayak to access remote sea stacks and make first ascents. My name is Ian Miller, and I live in Donegal, Ireland. Well, if you if you consider a sea stack, uh, a tower of rock that sits in the sea, the logistics uh, to get onto the stack, to find the stack, to climb it, to get off it safely, and get back to land, it's a, a bit like climbing an alpine peak. But take away the snow and uh, add the sea instead. It's a, it's, a, it's a great journey rather than just uh, just climbing, if you know what I mean. There's two main reasons why I climb so sea stack so one is because most of the time I have to be finished by five o'clock to pick my a child or children up from school, which means I have to start really, really early in the morning and getting partners to come out at six in the morning to climb a sea stack is pretty impossible. It's pretty impossible to find climbing partners in the west coast of Ireland anyway. And the second reason for it is when you're doing something that potentially is very, very, very dangerous, uh, being on your own means you've got a lot less chance of having mishap. So I kind of view having other people with me as more of a chance of having an incident or accident. So being alone just seems cutting the odds to a good, a good odds, you know what I mean? One of the, one of the sea stacks is uh, Croc Namara, the one that the, I soloed the other day. It's a world-class sea stack, there's no doubt about it. It's location, it's climbing, all this sort of thing. And it was only climbing in 2008, uh, when I first seen it, I actually thought that it had been climbed lots of times and it was hidden, it was one of these hidden secrets in Ireland that nobody knew apart from like a secret, a secret cult or something. But when I realised it hadn't been climbed, it's a bit like finding the old man of Hoy and uh, unclimbed if you like. Top work, Ian. It looks like you've got many more adventures left to come. In second spot is Arcteryx athlete Mark Andre Leclerc, who made the first ascent of the corkscrew route on Cerro Torre. My name is Mark Andre Leclerc, and I live in Squamish, BC. The first time I went to Patagonia, I think I was yeah, I was 21, um, and basically I got an invite from my friend Jason Crack, who's climbed a bunch in Patagonia, and he asked me to go down there and you know climb in the Torres, see what we could get up to. When I went back to solo the corkscrew, um, things just felt really right, like right from the hike in. I climbed the first maybe 300 meters of kind of mixed terrain up to the Call of Patience, where the real climbing uh, starts. And right when I reached the call, um, some weather moved in and I set up a bivy uh, in a crevasse, in a small crevasse. At three in the morning when I started climbing, it was still raining lightly and there was almost zero visibility in the, you know, through the clouds. And it felt kind of unlikely that I was gonna do the route. But at the same time, I didn't know if I would get any opportunity after that at all. And so I thought I would at least just try and just climb slowly as slowly as I needed to to feel safe and just see what happened with the day. Impressive stuff from one of Canada's up and coming alpinists. I'm Brett Harrington and I'm 23 and I'm living in Squamish, British Columbia. With Bree Soloing, it's, I, I really enjoy it. it. It's a different mentality than climbing with a rope. It's, you get really in tune with your mind and body. Um, it's not intense. Well, it can be. Depends on, depends on the route you're soloing. It could be really intense. Um, 
but you have to maintain your steady mentality the whole time. I only had heard about the soloing from Mark, Mark Andre, and he knows how much I love soloing. And so he kind of planted the seed in my mind that I might want to solo some peaks out there. There was a route that really inspired me, so I went and free soloed it. I'd hiked into the valley with Mark, and we base camped on the glacier together. And then we both split off to our high camp. So I hiked up to my high camp and stayed there for the night. It poured rain all night. And then um, in the morning, there was just clouds everywhere. So it wasn't good condition for soloing. So I waited till 10.30 and then I waited till 12.30 to start the hike. And I hiked over to the base and it was pretty wet. <laughs> but I kept climbing and yeah, free soloed it. Awesome work, Brett. We hope to hear more of your adventures in the coming years. That's all from today's show. We'll see you next time.